So we've spent that time learning about cubics and quartics. You could technically know how to draw quintic graphs as well and higher order polynomials because you've got the whole pattern of how these things work, OK? We're going to try and add some more types of graphs that we can draw. And we already know quadratics and all the polynomials and linear. We're now going to be doing reciprocal graphs. And they love to put these in exam questions. I've seen these coming up in exam questions many, many, many times. And lots of people don't know how to draw them. It's because they didn't pay attention in this lesson where reciprocal graphs are being learned how to draw them. So this is not something that's just a little throwaway topic. This will come up in assessments, whether it's mock exams or your real exams. This is a really popular thing, and you need to know how to draw reciprocal graphs. They need to be memorized, or you need to understand how they're working. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to sketch y equals 1 over x. This is what we call a reciprocal graph, because we have the reciprocal of x. Remember, reciprocal means 1 divided by. Now, I'm sure some of you know the shape of this graph already, and that's good if you do know the shape of this graph. If you know the shape of this graph, you may not know why it is the shape of that graph. So we're going to use this table of values here to help us think about what, what we can do to draw this graph. Okay. First of all, I want to notice if I put 0 in for my value of x on your calculators, can you do 1 divided by 0 and tell me what it says? It will say math error, right? It will say math error when you do a 1 divided by 0. And actually, we don't write math error. We would say, at this point, it is undefined. OK, it is undefined at that particular point that we've got here, which means that we can't plot that part on the graph at all. OK, I'm going to try and put in a really small value for x. I'm going to substitute in a small value for x. I want you to substitute in 0.01 and tell me what you get when you do that on your calculator. 100. Yeah, you can do that without a calculator, really, can't you? 1 divided by 0.01 is how many 0.01s go into 1? Well, there's 100 of them. So that means that at 0, it has no, I can't plot a point at 0. But as soon as I just go a tiny bit across from 0, I've got a really big positive number over here. So I'm going to start the graph. I know the graph is starting somewhere at the top. No, this is going to be a curve. This is going to be a curve. So don't start drawing anything just yet, OK? And I'm going to just try another value. If I try like a 0 0.5, what's 1 divided by 0 0.5? Two. 2. So here it was at 100. And just moving along a little bit, it's already come all the way down to 2. So it's going to be coming down somewhere to this kind of part that we've got. And then I'm going to put in a value like 1. Well, 1 divided by 1 is just going to give me 1. And then I'm going to put in a bigger value. I'm going to put in a value like 10. And 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. And if I put in a really big value, like 10,000, I'm so bad with this kind of place value stuff. It would be 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0, no, that's it. 0 0.0001. 0, 0, 0, 0, OK? Could I ever get? 0 for the y value. No, lots of people are shaking their heads. Why can't you get 0 for the y value? It's not possible. No matter how big you make x, you're always going to have 1 over that thing. You're always going to have a little extra 1 or some number trailing right at the end. So you can never get 0. So no matter how far you go along here, it's always going to be above this graph that we've got. So I said it started up really high at the top. It then kind of comes down, and then it keeps going along here, and it gets close to 0. It gets close to the y-coordinate being 0, but it would never be equal to 0. So the shape of the reciprocal graph is like this. okay? And if this kept going, which I don't want you to draw on yours, it would just be like getting closer and closer to the line, to the axis, but it will never touch it, because you're always going to have that little extra bit that makes it a little bit bigger than 0. Now, I've done that with just my positive values of x. If I change these so that I did them with the negative values of x instead, what would change about the y values? It's going to be negative. So it's going to be the same thing for the y values, but they're going to be negative. 
So it's gra the graph is going to look like minus 100 down here, and then it's going to go all the way to just a little bit less than 0. So if you were to think about what that looks like on a graph, it's the opposite. So could it hit the y-axis? No, it can't hit the y-axis either. It can't hit, because do you remember the reason we can't hit the y-axis? Because when x is 0, it is undefined. So here is x as 0. It doesn't actually hit the y-axis. Now, there's a few different ways that people think about this graph. The way that I think about this, and it's not necessarily the right way of thinking about it, is as you get closer to 0, it's getting so, so positive, so like positive infinity. And it's almost like it wraps all the way around and comes back to negative infinity when you get to the other side of zero. That's sort of the way that I think about this. But it has got a gap in the middle. It's got this gap at zero where the graph is undefined. So this is what the reciprocal graph looks like. It's a positive reciprocal graph. And we're using these two quadrants that we have here. Quadrant means area of the graph, OK? It can be in the other two quadrants. What do you think would change to make it be in the other two quadrants? One of the x's, um, minus. Something would be, there would be a minus involved, okay? There'll be a minus. And we're going to have a look at that one in just a second. So we've got a few different things I want to talk to you about here that I've written. I've said, we haven't used this language yet, but it says an asymptote is a line which the graph approaches but never reaches. So what asymptotes do we have for this reciprocal graph? X. Uh, what do you mean x? You're right. X. The x-axis, yeah. It looks like it's getting close to the x-axis, but it's never going to touch it. And then you said another one as well, didn't you? The y-axis. The y-axis. It's never actually going to touch the y-axis as well. So it kind of like swerves between those two axes like this. And they are both asymptotes. You will need to understand and use this word asymptote. So it's important you have that definition. So the asymptotes of y equals a over x is y is 0 and x is 0. This is the same as saying when y is 0, that is the x-axis. And when x is 0, that is saying the y-axis. So you could either say y equals 0 or the x-axis. And I've said here y equals a over x because a is just some number. Okay? In this case, it was 1, but it's just a number. So don't worry if on the top it says 3, 5, 12, 100, they will always have this kind of shape for a reciprocal graph that we've got, OK? Everyone got that drawn? Yes. OK, I'm going to have a look at the next one now. So this one says, sketch y equals k over x, where k is a positive number. Well, in the previous one, it was just a 1 divided by. It's now going to just be a number that I don't know being divided by x. It's going to be the same thing. And it's going to be very difficult to make this look different to the previous one because it's just a number being divided by it. And I'll show you that on the graph. So when k, they love to do them when they say k over x. They've told us k is a positive number. So it's still going to be this shape here and then this shape here. And I'm going to show you on Desmos, it's still going to be both. Because k is just a number. We did k when it was as 1. I'm going to show you what it looks like on Desmos. And you're going to see what happens when I change the value of k. And I'm going to keep it a positive number. So let's say y equals k over x. And I'm going to add a slider for k. So you can see we've got that graph, the reciprocal graph shape. Now, if I change the value of k, so I make k bigger. It's still the same shape. It's kind of hard to make it look any different on your graph because that, to me, if I zoom out, looks the same as what we just had. So no matter what the value of k is, it's still going to have that shape. It might just be sitting somewhere slightly different on the graph. So when you see the one that we've just drawn here, it's kind of difficult to show any significance of k. That's just the shape of the graph that we've got there. Okay? So as long as k is positive, you're going to have this kind of shape. So this time we're going to look at where it's a negative version instead. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker because it's kind of similar to what we were just doing. We know that 0 is still going to be undefined because you would have negative 1 divided by 0. But if I put in a small value like 0 0.01, what would my value of y be? minus 100, because you'd have negative 1 divided by 0 0.01. 
is minus 100. So that means now when x is a small number, y is actually starting down here. And if I put some other ones in, I don't know, if I put in like 1, I would have that y was minus 1. And if I put in 1,000, y would be minus 0 0.001. So it's the same kind of pattern here where I'm saying it's starting up here. It's then staying negative, and it's going to be getting to close to 0 but below 0. So the graph is going to look like this. Where do we think the other branch of this graph is going to be? Here? Here. Yeah, I'd say like north, uh, northwest, okay? So it's going to be the same as the previous one, but it's kind of flipped. So if I was going to do that, if I was going to put in some negative values, if I put in negative 0.01, I have a negative 1 divided by a negative 0.01. It's a positive. So that means it's going to be coming up from here. And if I was going to put in negative 1, I would get in 1. And if I put in negative 1,000, I would get a very small positive number like this. So we end up with the graph shape here like that. Now, this, this is minus 1 over x. This is a negative reciprocal graph. But actually, this could be y equals minus k over x where k is a positive number. Because I don't really know how to show the difference between a reciprocal graph when I change the value of that, the numerator. They all look the same kind of thing. So you are going to need to know the difference between a positive reciprocal graph and a negative reciprocal graph. The way I remember them is these ones are in these two quadrants that go like this. And things that go uphill are positive, right? And then when I look at this one, they're in the two quadrants like this, which make me think of it going downhill. So that's why I remember that that's a negative reciprocal graph. Or if you're in doubt, why not just test out a few different values? And you can always make sure that you can plot the graph that way. OK? If you have graphics calculators, you can literally draw it as well. OK, we are also needing to know a couple of graphs that if you've got any um, brothers and sisters who have done A-level a few years ago, these graphs didn't used to be in it, but we're going to have a look at some of these other graphs as well. So I also want to be able to sketch y equals 1 over x squared. What were you going to say, Andrew? Yeah, good. So the important thing that Andrew was just thinking about here is that if x is negative, what will happen to the x squared bit? Positive. Yeah, if x is negative, x squared is still going to be a positive number. And if you're doing 1 divided by a positive number, you're not going to have a positive number, which means you won't have anything in the bottom because everything has got to be bigger than 0. So that means this part here is still roughly going to be that same shape that we've got like this. And then it's going to be reflected, flipped on the other side like this. OK? So this is what a 1 over x squared graph looks like. Similarly, this also could be, this also could be y equals k over x squared if k is positive. But the key change here is we've gone from something being uh, linear in the denominator to a quadratic in the denominator. It's forced everything to be positive. You can't get any negative numbers for y there because you're always doing 1 divided by a positive number. So you can't get anything in that bottom section, which I'm now going to get rid of. So yeah? I remember in EPC, they used to give us these questions. Like questions that are, which one is 1 over x? Like match the, match the graph? Yeah, but we didn't. They didn't teach us that. And they didn't tell you why it was like this? Yeah. So you just had to guess. You just had to right? guess them. Yeah. So does that make sense why reciprocal graphs look like this now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay, good. As long as it makes... That's the whole point. It's like, the, I don't want you to do anything that feels like I'm just telling you stuff. I want you to try and understand why these things are happening. Now, who thinks they could just predict what this one is going to look like? This time it's negative 1 over x squared. It's only at the bottom because we've made it negative. So whatever values we got here, we're then doing the same thing, and we're making it negative. So they're going to be down in that bottom section instead. So the graph is going to look like this, 
and like this. Nice. <laughs> do these have any asymptotes? Okay, what are the asymptotes? Yep. Good. So the asymptotes are still the x-axis, which we call y equals 0, or the y-axis, which we call x equals 0. So they've still got asymptotes, these graphs that we've got here. Yeah, this is a really short exercise. This exercise is literally me just telling you what the graphs look like and explaining what they look like. And then exercise 4D is where we actually start using them a bit more as well. So we're not going to do practice on this. You're just going to kind of look at the graphs and you're going to be able to use them in the next exercise. I don't know. If I taught you, I would have, I would have taught you this. I would have taught you this. So now you would be able to match the graphs easily. Pardon? Not, not these ones, no. These, these ones, yes. And you would look at cubics and things, but you, not these ones. These ones are new, okay? So just you, this is your job. If you see a question where there's an x squared in the denominator, it's a reciprocal, but the, both the branches are at the top, like two hands like praying or something, okay? These bits like this. Okay? So this is the summary of the different things that we've got here. Reciprocal graphs where this is y equals k over x, where k is positive. This is a negative reciprocal graph, so the value on the top is negative. And I've shown these two examples. It doesn't really make much of a difference when the number has gone from a 1 to a 2. The same kind of, the shape is still there. And then I've got these ones. I've got the summary of what an, a squared reciprocal graph and a squared reciprocal graph looks like when it's negative. And again, the difference between where it's a 2 or a 5, the shape is still there. So if you ever have to draw a reciprocal graph, I don't care whether it's k on the top or a or 5. They're roughly going to have the same shape. However, if you do get asked to draw them on the same graph, I will want to show you a little bit about the differences between them, okay? So I am going to draw y equals 1 over x in blue and y equals 3 over x in red. 1 over x, I'm not going to spend much time explaining it because we've already talked about it, is this kind of shape. And then 3 over x is going to be the same, but what's happened to the y values? What's the difference between the y values here and the red one? There's something, you said something about 2, but I don't really think about it as like adding 2. It's more about multiplying. How much has the red one been multiplied by? It's triple. It's triple. The y value is higher. So for the x place that you're in, the y value is going to be higher up. So here, instead of the y value being here, it's going to be all the way up here. And instead of the y value being here, so this distance here is whatever that distance is, I've gone three times the distance up. And here, whatever that distance is, I'm going to go three times the distance up to this point here. So, this is the bigger gap. so it's just going to be a bigger gap. It's just going to look like this. And it's really hard to draw these, so I'm going to put them on Desmos afterwards. It's just like oh, further it's away. Distant. It's the same shape, but it's just like, more it's just more distant from it. It's just a bit further away. Awesome. It's very, very hard to draw these. The only thing they would look for in this is just, have they put the y equals 3 over x slightly further above and slightly further below? And I'm just going to show you that on Desmos at the same time so you can have that comparison. Because I don't like drawing these. I find these difficult to draw. And so I'll let you finish drawing them either from my sketch or from this sketch here. You can see how the 3 over x one is just slightly further away. But if I removed the 1 over x one, you would still be like, oh, it's a reciprocal graph, right? And here you would be like, oh, yeah, it's still a reciprocal graph. It's kind of difficult to tell what that numerator is. But you just can tell the shape, and you can tell it's a reciprocal kind of graph. OK, I think we've got time to have a look at the next bit as well. So I'm going to just stop the video there for a sec.